Thank you so much. <laughs> Y'all from Houston, you know, I don't like all this attention. Uh, this is actually a um, really unbelievable day. Uh, I'm so humbled to be here, um, to be surrounded um, by some of the greats that ever played this game. And the guys you see on TV, guys you read about and all that, and I'm standing up here and kind of sitting in the background just watching and just trying to figure out what's really going on. Um, you know, I want to first thank the baseball writers uh, for getting me in here. Um, truly, truly appreciate it. You guys have a tough job and do a great job of it. I thank the Hall of Fame. I thank Jane, Jeff, John, Whitney, and the entire Hall of Fame staff. Just an unbelievable job up here, what you guys do. Um, every single thing you guys have covered made my family, my friends feel welcome. Um, I can't thank you enough for all that. We congratulate John, Bud, Rock, and Pudge, so many things you've done in baseball, um, whether it be executive side uh, or playing. Uh, getting to know you guys here, uh, as great as you were in your fields, uh, you're even better people. Um, and I'm truly honored to go into this class with you guys. It's, it really has been special, um, and I thank you for that. Uh, as I said before, it's an honor to be with all these Hall of Famers, to stand up here and try and talk my story, uh, which I'd much, much rather be sitting in some of these rooms they have as, and listening to the stories that they tell. Um, but you know, this is all part of it and I love it and I'm, I'm humbled and I'm grateful. Um, you know, just to share this, I, you know, my family um, means so much to me and, you know, to have my, my brothers, my cousins, my nieces, um, to be here with me is, is really, really special to me. My, uh, my family is just, I can't tell you how much it, they mean to me as far as, you know, we have baseball life, um, which I played for 15 years, obviously put a lot more time to, the, to it to that. But there's so much more that goes on in life. Um, and for my family and my children, um, with Lauren, Maxwell, Raquel, Blake, and Bryce, um, I think the pleasures of being a father, um, getting to see every single child be different. Um, always a challenge every day and always fun. Uh, you make my life so happy to watch you grow as people. To my mother, um, mom, you're, you're just absolutely just the most amazing woman in the entire world. Um, you know, as a kid, you know, when you get in trouble, you always go to your mom, never go to your dad. Um, that's how you're going to get away with stuff, at least for a while. Uh, you've been a staple in my life, a pillar for me, um, through all my success and through some of my failures, too. Uh, I can't tell you how much I love you and what you mean to me. My father, Bob, um, you know, it's amazing. You know, I, I would imagine a lot of guys up here talk about their fathers because there's something about a dad for a son that plays baseball. Um, you brought me to love this game of baseball, uh, to go out and every single day for us to try and get better. You used to say that you gave me my, your right arm throwing me batting practice all the time, uh, and you did. But more importantly, you taught me how to be a man, showed me respect, how to have respect, uh, to walk through this life as a man. And, you know, that's something that I'm very proud of, and I try and use that with my kids, too. Um, you are just a wonderful father, and I'm so happy that you're here for this day for me. Uh, I know it means a lot to you, and we're in this together, my friend. <laughs> to my beautiful wife, uh, words cannot explain how much you, you have meant to me. You know, uh, as wonderful, like I said, as wonderful as things are up here, you know, there's good times and bad times, and I know uh, and everybody that knows me, I would not be standing here without you, your love, and your support. Um, you have taken me through so many different journeys, and to finally end up here, um, for both of us uh, to sit here and just kind of look and go, is this really happening? Um, because there are some times that we didn't even know. But 
Uh, you have been a rock for me, and I can't tell you how much you, I appreciate everything that you do for me every single day. So thank you, my love. You know, they, they talk about, you know, the Hall of Fame, is this a dream come true? I mean, I can't honestly say that. Um, I mean, who, who's a young kid dreams about being a Hall of Fame? I mean, maybe somebody do. I mean, for, for a kid um, that was a Red Sox fan my entire life, you know, I dreamed of playing for the Red Sox. Um, you know, chances probably weren't pretty good at that. Uh, I was never that great. Um, but something my father instilled in me when I was a kid is to never quit. Don't quit at anything you ever try. And, uh, you know, I've pretty much stuck to that. There are certain situations that I wish I had quit a couple jobs that I had. Dishwasher and friendlies at Cape Cod, I should have quit that. Um, sometimes I probably should have quit baseball too, but, you know, deep inside of me, I just never gave up. Um, I continued to, to get a little bit better every year. Um, and that drive, that my mom and my father gave me, you know, got me a long way. Um, you know, as I said, I wasn't the most talented guy. I went to, uh, I came from Killingworth, Connecticut. I went to all boys Xavier High School. Um, I, yes. um, played for Coach Garska and Richie Magner. Um, had a nice uh, career there. I, I wasn't on the varsity team when I was a freshman. Ended up playing there, played in American Legion. Um, you know, never ever even thought about a draft. I mean, that, <laughs> that was funny to me. I was like, well, I don't think we were at war. So, but the draft itself was not a possibility for me. But I, I kept getting a little bit better. Um, I was fortunate I played in Legion baseball where a lot of guys from the University of Hartford had gone. Um, and I got a scholarship offer from the University of Hartford and head coach Bill Dennehy. Pretty much my only place that I could go to school and play baseball. So I took that opportunity. I mean, I got to play, a, a, I was a starting shortstop my freshman year, um, which, you know, gave me a lot of opportunity because, you know, if I went to a big school, I probably wouldn't have played right off the get-go. And, you know, I hit for the cycle and added a home run my first game, made two errors at short, and I played third base for the rest of my career. So it tells you how well I did it uh, short. Um, so I went to University of Harvard. I played for Dan Gooley for two years, Coach Gooley Skip. Just a memorable time playing with you. We had such a great team. Um, two of my best friends in life, Chris Peterson and Greg Centracchio, I met there. And for over 20 years, we've been best friends ever since. Um, types of things that you can't take away. And, and baseball brought that for us. And that's what we lived and died with baseball, and now we do it with our kids. So I thank you both so much. Um, I shouldn't say, um, um, so I got to play, I know, sorry. Um, so I got to play in Cape Cod. And I truly believe that that's where I became, you know, that I thought I could play baseball a little bit past college. I started playing there with uh, a bunch of guys that were on TV all the time. Robin Ventura, Joey Bell, which, which became Albert Bell. I mean, these guys were just tremendous players that I saw, but I, felt, I realized that I could play, uh, which really helped me. I went back to school there and I got drafted uh, in 89 by the Boston Red Sox, which was a dream come true. I mean, I was, what I said earlier, that was my dream. And that's what happened. I mean, can you imagine I got back from a game, a college game at Fenway Park to come back to my dad's house and him throwing me a Red Sox t-shirt. Uh, it was pretty big for my family. You know, I went to the Red Sox. I was, I played in low A, got to double A and got traded. Um, I got traded to the Houston Astros and I had no idea what I was getting into. You know, I, I learned very early that you know, it's a good thing is, you know, no matter what you do, if you're a player, you know, you just go out and play as hard as you can because, you know, make the organization do something for you. And they did. They traded me. Uh, Bill Wood traded for me, the GM of the Houston Astros. Um, they got me from the Red Sox. Not sure if exactly I was the first choice, but, you know, they had another guy that was playing third base at the time with the Red Sox named Wade Boggs, so I wasn't going anywhere there. So, so I get traded and I, you know, I'm asked who I got traded for and they said, well, you got traded for Larry Anderson. I said, who's Larry Anderson? So he says, oh, he's a relief pitcher for the, uh, the Astros, really good one. Um, so I have to thank Larry for being such a great reliever uh, that the Red Sox wanted you. You did a great job with the Red Sox. And Larry used to always get, get on me when I went to Philadelphia and just say, hey, man, you got to step it up. Because, you know, you're, you're, people are not actually talking about me anymore. And I was like, oh, okay. 
So I do the best I can. I play my entire career, Larry, and okay, I'm here. Is this good enough for you that I've got enough props? <laughs> I want to thank uh, my other GMs, Bob Watson, Jerry Hunsicker. Um, Jerry Hunsicker was a big part of such the big rebuild in our community in the Houston Astros. Um, an awesome GM, as all of them were. I had Tim Papura and Ed Wade. Jeff Loonhow, who is there now, is just doing a tremendous job for the Houston Astros. Um, what a fun team to watch and very proud of them. I thank my owners, my first owner, John McMullen, um, signed my first paycheck with the Houston Astros. Um, sorely missed, what a tremendous man. A lot of fun we had with him. Drayton McLean, uh, I can't tell you how much uh, I appreciate everything you've done. I know Craig talked about it earlier, about playing our entire career with one organization. And, you know, that takes, that takes a lot for players to do that in today's society, but, you know, it takes a lot from owners, too, and, and teams that they want to keep you around. Uh, we were very fortunate to have a give and take with the organization. Drake McLean was a big part. You and Elizabeth have been a part of my life for a long time. Uh, I truly appreciate everything you've ever done for me. Jim Crane, the Astros owner right now, I thank you so much uh, for everything you've done for my family, everything you're doing for the Houston Astros. Um, it's a class organization, and you're the head of that, and I appreciate everything you've ever done and are continuing to do. I want to thank um, two of my trainers, Rex Jones and Dave Labossier. Uh, most of you that know in Houston, I played you know, three years basically with by an arm and a half. Uh, and Dave and Rex would spend hours and hours grinding on my shoulder just to get me out there to play. And I truly play, appreciate all the efforts you've given me uh, to get that shoulder to do the best it could out there. So I want to thank you for that. My clubhouse guys, and anybody that's sitting up here knows about clubhouse guys. They're very, very important. Um, you know, they don't get as much credit as they deserve and stuff that they do behind, behind the scenes. I had a guy, and Dennis Laborio, who I had my first year, who gave me number five because he was mad at the Astros for trading Larry to the Red Sox. And I happen to be from Boston, so he gave me a single-digit number as a non-roster invitee. That does not happen. You, know, you see guys in the big leagues now with 67, 98, and all that. That's what you get with non-roster guys. But I got number five, so it's very fortunate with that. Carl Schneider, Steve, Tweedy, and Phil Rosowitz, who I've met uh, in Milwaukee, who has uh, been a great, dear friend of mine. and You do it right, my friend, and I appreciate everything you do. Um, my two other friends, uh, Barry Waters, a traveling secretary, has been there my entire career, taking care of me and the entire Astros organization. Um, you just, uh, you were a special part of my life and still are. I appreciate that. Barry Axelrod, my agent, uh, you've been there for me through thick and thin. Um, all the good times, all the bad times. Like a lot of the people I'm going to mention, there's a lot of good and bad. But I want to thank you so much for everything you do. I want to thank all my coaches who I've had that have been instrumental in my growth as a player. I mean, all of you are so great. Um, you know, with my swing, um, if anybody saw it, it's, it's not something you want to teach to your kids. Uh, you spread out that far. I'm not really worried about the spreading out, but stepping backwards and dropping your hands is not really what you want to do. Um, but Rudy Jaramillo that I had when I first came up, uh, which I had a pleasure to see him uh, earlier today, just the effort that you put in to me every single day to, to always try to make me better. Uh, I solely, really do appreciate that and all the times that we went in the back cage and worked. Even when you were the hitting coach for Texas and working with Pudge after a series, you would come and I'd meet you in the back cage and ask you what you saw and you would tell me. So I truly, truly appreciate that. The other coach I want to recognize is Matt Galante. Oh, if you remember anything from Craig's speech, um, such a big, big part of Houston Astros baseball. Not only just a great baseball guy, but just a great person. Um, just someone you could go to for anything that you needed. Um, he, was, he was the guy that would tell you when you stunk, and he'd tell you when you did well. Um, you, never, you never not knew where you stood with Matty. The countless time that he spent with me at first base doesn't compare to what he did for Craig. I watched him for hours and hours and hours work with guys to make them better. Uh, so I appreciate, Matty, everything you've done. The thing about my career um, that I'm proud of, um, 
you know, obviously you get here with tons of numbers, uh, and, and I get that, and mine aren't over, overly glaring. Um, but what I do take pride in is I thought I tried to do everything well. Uh, it wasn't just, you know, hitting home runs and, um, you know, it, those are nice, but, the, you know, you got RBIs and run scored, and uh, for me, you know, run scored was very important to me because it was mindset. Uh, and I wanted to score for our team, and I wanted to score for the, my other my other players to make their job a lot easier. Uh, I truly, honestly, as I sit here, I enjoy the stolen bases more than anything else. It's the only number I really cared about towards the end of my career is getting 200 stolen bases. So for a, uh, a little guy with uh, not much speed, uh, I truly uh, appreciated that. And that's what I try to be for my, my teammates. If I could do everything, then you know, I could help us win in, in different ways. It didn't have to just hit a home run or drive in a run. I could walk. I could steal a base. I could go first to home or second to home or first to third, whatever it might be. Uh, my bunt plays, I, I, I love that when people had to change how they used to, to do bunts just to, to get away from me because I, I was on top of most of the pitchers, um, sometimes players, but more, more pitchers than anything else. Um, you know, baseball is, it, you know, as I talk about all this, baseball is truly about relationships. Um, you know, we spend so much time off the field together, um, you know, more than you, you see on the field. I mean, being on the field is wonderful. I mean, people say, well, I, I, I love playing baseball. Yeah, I love playing baseball, but I don't love stinking. And I don't love, you know, going having offers and things like that. I mean, it's a grind out there. But, you know, it's the relationships you make in the clubhouse with coaches, uh, clubhouse guys, um, that, that really, truly have, um, you know, given me a unique opportunity to grow as a man, you know, both on and off the field. And I, I, I don't take that lightly. It's very, very important to me. Um, I have had so many wonderful teammates. I mean, really have. And I, I just wish I had time to talk about e each and every one of them um, because that's how much you've me meant to me in my life. The only thing I wanted to do was be a good teammate, somebody you could count on, even when I wasn't feeling well or my arm hurt or whatever it was, that I was always out there and you knew that you could look in the lineup and that I was there every day. Um, I'll talk about just about a few of them. Um, Casey Candell, I learned so much about baseball through Casey, uh, just the way he saw it. And I was just a young kid and I first came into the big leagues. One of the things I remember is my first time I played in, in Atlanta there was 5,000 people there, and I could, you know, you could hear the lights buzzing and things like that. Came back at the end of the year before they clinched, and there was 40,000 people there, and the, literally the ground was shaking. Uh, and I was sitting next to Casey, and I, mean, I said, "Man, this is awesome." He goes, "You," well, I can't even say the words. He goes, "This is what it's all about." And I, I, I took that, and I, and I really understood that. He taught me so much about base running, he, how to be a good person, how to be a good player. Casey really, really helped me in my life, and to this day, we're still very, very close friends. Brad Osmus, a uh, fellow Connecticut guy, um, spent a lot of time together. Uh, one of my closest friends in the entire world. He, he just, he was so much fun to be around. Um, you know, he, he knew the game inside and out. He was a tremendous catcher. Um, you know, just a close friend that uh, I, I truly, truly uh, cherish. Uh, we had some great times together, um, played in a lot of games together, spent a lot of time sitting in the locker discussing every single thing that you can imagine in life. Uh, so Brad is very, I hold him very, very dear to my heart. As I said, things are, are baseball is about relationships. I want to say one thing. Uh, you know, I'm a kid from Connecticut and uh, started to play baseball in 1997. The Florida Marlins won the World Series and traded a guy named Moises Alou uh, to the Houston Astros. So very quickly in spring training, I got to become close with Moises. Um, and our relationship grew and grew and grew. Um, been to the Dominican a few times with his family and his lovely wife, Austria. And two of my children, um, Bryce and Blake, their godparents are Moises and Austria. And you know, where, where can you get that but in baseball? I mean, where am I gonna meet Moises except playing baseball? And just a tremendous, tremendous person I love you both so much, even though you're waving an Expos hat. <laughs> That's all right, we love rock too. I love you, homeboy. My last teammate I want to talk about, obviously, is Craig Biggio. Thank you, kid, for that 
that wonderful uh, intro. That was great. Um, Craig Biggio, I've watched his entire career. When I first came up, he was a catcher, played second base, played center field, back to second base. Craig could do anything that he wanted to. Uh, you never meet a player ever put more effort and time into his craft than Craig. Um, you know, it, as, as I sit here today and we go in the Hall of Fame, and Craig and I, and, and pretty much in Houston, we've been known to be together. You always Craig Biggio and Bagwell, Biggio and Bagwell, Bagwell, Biggio, whatever you want to say it. But now we're here, uh, we'll always be here in Houston, and, excuse me, in the Hall of Fame together. Um, I've known his whole entire family, Patty and the kids, and just our relationship that has grown over so many years and I can't thank you enough uh, for just giving me inspiration to how to play every single day and post and go out there and give everything you can and Craig and I just wanted to win and we wanted to win one way and that was the right way and I hope that's what we did and I, I really thank Craig for that. A couple last things. You know, baseball, as I talked about relationships, I've also lost some teammates that I want to talk about. I lost Andohar Cedeno, I've lost Jose Lima, Ken Kimaniti I lost, um, or we all lost, uh, all of them. It's, that was a very, very tough, tough thing. Kimmy, you know, I, I almost want to say that Kimmy's, his heart was too big. Uh, he was the nicest guy in the entire world. Took me in when I was supposed to take his job. Um, and. You know, it's just, it was just a wonderful thing for him and our relationships and his family, you know, with Craig and Patty and Cammy. I mean, we just, all the kids grew up and it, it's just, it was a pleasure. And the others I want to talk about is Daryl Kyle. Um, I don't, uh, there's not one day that goes by that I don't think about Daryl Kyle. Um, he died way too early. Um, thankfully, he died peacefully. Uh, but I can't tell you how many times that we've talked on the phone and talked about going to fishing around the world and just the type of person and his family and his great father, um, great husband. And DK, man, you were sorely missed, buddy, but I know you're down here somewhere. So thank you. Lastly, I want to thank the Astros fans. You guys have been absolutely wonderful. I can't tell you how much um, being around you guys in the city and showing me the love and my family. So where my kids were born, so my kids are raised. Uh, I love you so much for everything that you've done for me. I was thinking over the last few months doing this thing, I was thinking about something. I was th thinking about my father and me. My father would come home at 6 o'clock at night, take off his shoes. we go outside, play catch, play pepper, play baseball. And then about 7 o'clock, we would try and turn on the Red Sox game. I'd have to go up on the roof, mess with the antenna and stuff like that. Obviously, we had no cable back then but it was time that I spent with my father. We would sit there at the table or watch the games. My dad would talk about his favorite player, Ted Williams. We'd talk about Yaz, we'd talk about Fisk, talk about Rice, we'd talk about Boggs. Um, what we were doing was spending quality time together as a family. And if I could have given you guys anything for being at the dinner table or going to a game and to watch us play and to watch me play and I brought some joy, then I was help bring you joy uh, in a world that can be tough sometimes, but if you enjoyed me playing and it brought our f families together, then I did my job. Thank you.